Tzedek opened for me the, the gates of righteousness. These are words we will say at the Seder Monday night. Tonight is Shabbat Hagadol, the Shabbat right before Pesach. Um, we'll talk more about that later, but first, let's welcome each other. Welcome to the Temple B'nai Or for you on all of you here. Pesach, the Seder is a night of questions, so I want you to turn to the people around you, introduce yourselves, but also ask the people around you, especially the ones you don't know, a question. It could be something like, how are you doing? Ask someone a question. <laughs> yes. So, so let, us, let us bring in Shabbat with light. It's our honor. Call up Ezekiel, Zeke, <laughs> Dev Devin, uh, and his family as we uh, as, as we light our Shabbat candles. The candle blessing is found on page two.
Is this right? The Zeke is a, a third generation uh, Temple B'nai Or member? Is that right? Is that right? Yeah. Sa Sandra, who had her bat mitzvah on the Sima too. <laughs> so uh, I forgot to mention, of course, we have here Kulot Or, our adult choir with us. And I noticed our choir is growing, and it could always grow more, right? So. You can join if you want. Yes. Lug, lug a lug. <laughs> Let's turn to page 20. Lecha dodi, likerat gala, ben deshava, nekabela.
pray on page 30. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who speaks the evening into being, skillfully opens the gates, thoughtfully alters the time and changes the seasons and arranges the stars and their heavenly courses according to plan. You are creator of day and night, rolling light away from darkness and darkness from light, transforming day into night and distinguishing one from the other. Adonai Tzavot is your name. Ever-living God, may you reign continually over us into eternity. Blessed are you, Adonai, who brings on evening. <laughs> תמיד ימלוך עלינו לעולם ועד. ברוך אתה אדוני, המעריב הרבי. אמן. Page 32. Everlasting love you offered your people Israel by teaching us Torah and mitzvot, laws and precepts. Therefore, Adonai, our God, when we lie down and when we rise up, We'll meditate on your laws and your commandments. We will rejoice in your Torah forever. Day and night, we will reflect on them, for they are our lives, and doing them lengthens our days. Never remove your love from us. Praise to you, Adonai, who loves your people, Israel. <laughs> Adonai Elohecha Bechol Levavcha Ubechol Nafshecha Ubechol Meodecha Vehayu Hadvarim Ha'ele Asher Anuchi Metzavecha Hayom Alevavecha Veshinanta Ham Levanecha Vedibarta Habam בשבתך בביתך ובלכתך בדרך ובשוכבך ובקומך וקשרתם לאות על ידך והיו לתותפות בין עיניך וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובשעריך למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי ואיתם קדושים לאלוהיכם. אני, אדוני אלוהיכם, אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים, להיות לכם לאלוהים. אני, אדוני אלוהיכם, אמן. Let's pray at the bottom of page 39. In a world torn by violence and pain, a world far from wholeness and peace. Give us the courage to say, Adonai, there is one God in heaven and earth. The high heavens declare your glory. May earth reveal your justice and love. From bondage in Egypt, we were delivered. At Sinai, we bound ourselves to your way. Inspired by prophets and instructed by sages, time and again, we overcame oppressive forces. Though our failings are many and our faults are great, it has been our glory to bear witness to our God keeping alive in dark ages your vision of a world redeemed. Let it continue to 
word for the day, when the nations will be one and at peace, then shall we rejoice as Israel did, singing on the shores of the sea. I'm just going to add to these words of strength and rejoicing as we are about to sit down at our Seder tables and, you know, rejoice with our freedom and celebrate our formative moment of how we became a free people from slavery and know in our hearts that we are not all free this year. So we're going to keep praying for that. Really hard, we're going to keep praying. But also, I want to remind you, or maybe tell you if you didn't know, that this setting that we sing tonight, that Kulot Or has so beautifully learned, is a setting written by uh, Or and Feliza Zohar. And every time we sing a melody that's been written in the land of Israel, it brings me back. So I want you all to come with me to the Galilee where this was written. And uh, in Kibbutz Hararit, which is surrounded by Arab villages and a beautiful place where coexistence is real and it happens uh, between the Jewish uh, villages and the Arab villages. So this is our Micha Mocha prayer, uh, a prayer for a day, the day after this war, where we will coexist and live in peace. But for now, we pray for freedom really, really hard. Amen. Page 42. So tonight we sing the setting that is both on page 42 and 43. And um, I always say that we go from this prayer of strength to a prayer of softness and vulnerability, facing our dark places as the sun sets outside and think about perhaps the possibility of the darkness in, in, in each one of our hearts. And so we seek each other's comfort and love, and we sing these words of beauty. Spread over us your sukkah of peace. May we all be enveloped in this prayer and protect one another. And let us both sing in English and in Hebrew together. Sorry. Everybody, let there be love. Let an understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storm. Adonai Eloheinu. One more 
time together. Amen. Page 44. Turn to page 46. We begin our Amidah, our, where we'll begin together and continue privately. The words of our ancestors are on the even number of pages. There's contemporary prayers on the odd number of pages. We can turn, our eyes can wander between them, or our eyes can wander inward toward the prayers of our hearts. We'll begin standing in any way that you can. And when you're finished with your prayers, either at page 62, or when you're finished, you may be seated.
Pray for our need, for our loved ones in need of refuah shlema, a complete healing, refuah tanefesh, refuah to aguf, a healing of body, a healing of spirit. And we know that it's one of the greatest mitzvot to visit the sick, bikor cholim. And so our prayers will spur us to visit our loved ones to help them heal. This Shabbat, we are praying for Larry Baum, Lauren Baum, Lindsay Baum. Alan Benjamin, Richard Benjamin, Larry Benson, Margot Blaustein, Robert Boudreau, Cecily Bick, Julie Sino, Eleanor Nickner, Alan Goldstein, Harriet Goldstein, Douglas Greenfield, Lisa Glick, Lindsay Herbst, Harriet Hochberg, Paige Holt, Oliver Horn, Linda Eidelberg, Lawrence Heap, Joe Koneman, Deborah Litvin, Robert Magadoff, Allison Margolis, Joe Martinez, Millie Martinez, Reese Osmond, Donna Paris, Mark Phelps, Eileen Reinfleisch, Carol Rosenblatt, Jeannie Schlosser, Pearl Schlossman, and Jolly Shallot, Anita Slotinsky, Marjorie Van Dow, Edie Weinstein, Lori White, Lisa Wolper, Izzy Yagoda, and Judy Young. If you're praying for someone, you'd like to put their name in the chat, if you're online, or if you would like to say their name, please do so as I go around. Also add to our prayers the names of the chayalim, the soldiers that are protecting the land of Israel, that are of our own families here at Temple B'nai Or. We think specifically at this time of Itai Lubaton, Sal Zontag, Dor Yosef Vengel, Raviv Lavit, Shira Feinberg, Meitav Feinberg, Noam On, Yali Gamliel, Lotem Dolano, Meir Analek, Minadav Bloom, Evyatar Bloom, Yuval Reuter, Guy Reuter, Yoel Greenspoon, Litali Sachar, Noam Kedmon, Shai Yosef Eldad, Yariv Sa'ar, Sharon Sa'ar, Reuven Korten, Netach Korten, Benjamin Carlton, Halel Tenenbaum, Harav Nimrod Peretz, Sol Ben Ziva. Let's find 
pray for the captives, the hostages. This Shabbat, we're praying especially for Nadav Papawell, who's 51, from uh, Kibbutz Nirim. He was taken captive with his mother, Hannah Pitri. His brother, um, Roe, died that day on Simchat Torah. We pray that Nadav, of course, is still alive. We pray that he will return home soon. As I said at the beginning of the service, tonight starts Shabbat Haggadol, which is the Shabbat before Pesach. Traditionally, I think in, in the Middle Ages, this was, there were two times a year when the rabbi would give a big sermon to the whole congregation. That was at Shabbat Haggadol, the Shabbat before Pesach, and then during Shabbat Shuvah, uh, the Shabbat between uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. But you are all lucky, you get to hear from me every week. You're not laughing at it. <laughs> so, uh, but I want to I want to start before I ask you a question. I want to let you. I think I've done this the last few years. Ask me questions because Pesach is a night where we ask questions. And in fact, the four questions, the the fair kashas, as we say in Yiddish, are uh, are just there to get the the juices flowing four questions. There are sample questions that a kid may ask. That's why you have the, the youngest kid ask them just to start you out, to ask questions. And all the things we do at Pesach are kind of odd things to get us to talk about the story of, of the exodus, of Yitziat Mitzrayim. So I'll start off and ask you if you have any questions. It could be about ideas of Pesach, about how to do Pesach, anything like that. I didn't put any plants in the crowd, so... Uh, we might be sitting here in silence for a minute. So does anybody have any questions about Pesach? Huh? Yes? Yes? <laughs> right, right. So Melissa asks that there's a, there's, a, there's a tradition of making a challah in the shape of a key. Is it before Pesach, right? It's this, this Pesach you do? So, which has become popular again in, in uh, like, in um, Jewish circles, it was like an old, old country tradition called a, a, a schlissel is a key, the schl schlissel challah, and I don't know why. And you put a key in it too. Right? I think some people like will put a key in it, kind of like you know. It's like, supposed uh, to be for a good parnasa. A good parnasa. Yeah. So like a good, uh, good. Par parnasa is like a good livelihood. Livelihood for the next year. Yeah. So uh, I don't know why it's right before Pesach. I will have to look that up. And you're going to ask me again next year. Or in the middle of Pesach, you'll ask me next week. Okay? <laughs> Sorry. But you'll see, it, it, I think it's all popular now because of Instagram and people put pictures of their key hollows. <laughs> Other questions? Yes. Sam. Ah, yeah, yeah. A feather. Why the feather? Because that's what our ancestors used as a, as a broom. Right. Yeah. 
it's like a broom, but I think it's, I think it's so you actually get down on your knees and you're really looking for things. You're really, because in the Torah it says we can't have any chametz in the house, and, um, and so, uh, you know, you really search. And why, why uh, you're supposed to use a candle, too. Even though we have electric lights, you know, you could use a, a flashlight, but we use a candle. This is, I mean, I could think maybe it's the same reason we have a Torah in a scroll, even though we have books, right? But our ancestors said, no, we have to use a scroll because that's what our ancestors used. Maybe that's why. Um, but here, you're not supposed to have chametz in your house. And so there's, there's traditional things that you do. One is you clean. Two is then the last bits you find, you destroy. People will burn them in the front yard. Then three, some people will uh, sell them to, to a non-Jew for the week. Or... Or there's a, if you look in the Haggadah, before the Seder, there's a special like, prayer you say that says, if there's any chametz in my house, it's not mine anymore, it's disappeared. Oh, I thought you're supposed to give it away. No, not give it away. Well, you can, yeah. Giving it away would be a great thing. You sell it if you want it back afterwards. Oh. Right? But yes, <laughs> give it to people who need to eat. That's the best thing to do. <laughs> yes. Other questions? Other questions? Ah, Ken. I think, yeah, so there, there's a traditional fast that firstborn sons, and I think it's only if, I'm not sure, I think it's only if the firstborn of the mother was a son <laughs> that you have, you have this fast the day before Pesach. And uh, is it in, so I, think, I think probably it's because we, the firstborns of the Israelite houses were, were spared because they were doing Pesach. And, uh, um, but yeah, you could say, yes, it's in solidarity with the people who actually did die, who didn't deserve to die necessarily, right? I, that's, that's beautiful. Uh, Barbara. So, I just, I'm a Catholic from Greece, yeah. which is the Christian Yeah. Do you eat lamb? So, is the Ashkenazi Jews don't eat lamb? Ashkenazi Jews don't eat lamb. <laughs> right, so Ashkenazi Jews, I knew, don't eat lamb. Do they, Moroccan, Tunisian Jews. Do you eat lamb at Pesach? I'm asking your parents. Let's see. What's it? Who? Uh, there's your mom. There's your... Yeah, I'll talk about that in a second. So, so Greek Jews ate lamb. Okay, so why don't you eat lamb? So in the Torah, the main part of Pesach was on the day before Pesach, on the, 14th, or on the 10th of Nisan, you picked out a sheep or a goat. Then on the 14th, you brought it to the temple. And then the priest would kill it for you. Then you would take that sheep or goat, and you would go, and if you were not from Jerusalem, you would be staying somewhere in Jerusalem, or you're camping out in the hills, or you go home, and you have to eat that whole sheep or goat, your whole family, or if you, in, in that night, you have to eat the whole thing, so you may have to invite a bunch of people over. I, I gave a Devar Torah last night, that when you are giving a sacrifice a piece of gratitude, means you have to share. Gratitude leads to sharing. Now, um, so Ashkenazi Jews, at least, don't eat lamb, lamb or goat on Pesach because we don't have the sacrifices in the temple anymore, and we don't want people to be confused that this is a sacrifice, pe Pesach lamb. Also, when you're explaining the things in the Seder plate, you point to the maror, you point to the matzah, you don't point at the bone. Yeah, yeah, same reason. You don't say, this is the Pesach. Right? You say this represents the Pesach. Well, the other things are the Maror and the, the Matzah. Okay, so. Great, these are all great questions. Oh, yes. Why is Moses right. not mentioned in the Haggadah? Why is Moses not mentioned in the Haggadah? What? That, yeah, so in, in a traditional Haggadah, the traditional telling of the, of the Pesach in dinner, it doesn't mention Moshe, Moses' name. Um, well, that's kind of a historical question, and a lot of historians think it's pro it might be because, one, we want to see that the miracle, we might get confused and think that Moses did all the miracles, and that's not the case. It was God. We don't worship people in Judaism. In fact, like the Torah says, when Moses dies at the end of the Torah, we don't even know where he's buried. It, and it makes it a clear point that that's the case. So that's it. So some people think that the Seder 
now historically, the Seder came around, uh, became kind of more solidified, uh, codified uh, when the early Christian church was becoming codified also. And they also had a special meal with rituals, but that special meal and rituals was, a, was we say in Hebrew, daf, or I'd say in Aramaic, dafka, especially about a person, right? They probably came around the same time, right? <laughs> I mean, yes, ours was first in that the, the eating a meal on Pesach, eating a meal on Pesach comes right from the Torah, but what we know as the Seder evolved over time and, and definitely evolved about, you know, by about 15, you know, 1800 years ago, something like that, <laughs> right? And so which was the same time as the early Christian church. So that's, pro some people speculate, but we don't have an answer. We don't know what life. Okay, these are all great questions. So now I have a question for you. Towards the, after you eat your meal at the Seder, there is more to the Seder after you eat, eat your meal. <laughs> eat, you know, the four cups don't have to be, the, the, the third and fourth cup come after the meal, right? Okay. So what do you do? You go to the door, you open the door. Why, why are you opening the door? Elijah. 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 Okay. So there's something you say, traditionally you say there, I'll talk about that in a second, but like, what, what do you expect is going to happen? All right, so, so what happens? You open the door, the dog runs right out. We have an electric <laughs> fence, it's okay, right? But you, you're there to welcome, well, welcome the stranger you do at the beginning of the, of the Seder. You say, all who are hungry, come and eat. None of us actually welcome strangers, we should, right? I'm, I don't, I'm, don't, I'm not denigrating you, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, but we, we welcome... We welcome Elijah, who, yes, it's like we're actually welcoming a stranger, but does he come? <laughs> All right, there you go. You got uh, someone named Elijah, right? So, no, he doesn't come. And I think it's the point, you know, even though, like, your grandpa always said, oh, look, did he drink the wine? <laughs> but no, he doesn't come. That's the point. Because, as, as Hallie just said, Eliyahu Hanavi, Elijah the prophet, in our tradition is the harbinger of, of Mashiach, the Messiah, the one who's going to bring peace to the world. And yet we open the door and we look out. And is that the case? No. So I ask you another question. When else do we invite Elijah into our homes or into the synagogue? Melissa? Every Brit Milah, in, in liberal circles, I do it every, every naming for a girl too. Right? We have a chair there. So uh, at, at the Seder table, maybe you leave a chair, but you definitely leave a cup of wine. At a brit, brit Milah, we have a chair there. When else do we welcome Elijah? Who said it? Who said it? Ah, Mary, yes. Every Shabbat. A at the end of every Shabbat. Actually, you don't do it during Shabbat because Elijah shouldn't travel on Shabbat. But at the end of Shabbat, that's, that's really why. At the end of Shabbat... You, you, you welcome Eliyahu. Why? What is Shabbat supposed to be? A, a little taste of the world to come, a little taste of what the world could be. And so we welcome Elijah at the end, but again, all of a sudden Sunday starts. Well, in Israel on Sunday, you go back to work, and therefore the world is not as it should be, right? Okay. At the Brit Milah, it's about the potential that this baby could be the one who, who brings peace to the world, right? Um, but he, Elijah doesn't show up. In, so where, do, where does this tradition come from? Well, this Shabbat is called Shabbat Hagadol because of a verse in the special Haftarah for tomorrow that comes from the last prophet, Malachi, the last words of the prophet, says, Hine Anochi Sholeach Lechem, et Eliyah, Eli, we call him Eliyah Hanavi, Lifne Bo Yom Adonai Hagadol Vehanora. Hine, so I'll, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before the coming of the awesome, fearful day of the Eternal One. And Elijah shall reconcile parents with children and children with their parents, so that when I come, I do not strike the whole land with utter destruction. We can't end on a, on a downer there, so we repeat the verse. Lo, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before the coming of the awesome and fearful day of God. Elijah, in Jewish ideas, comes, 
And what's the sign of peace? Reconciling parents and children. Right? A lot of people this year are talking about how, how are we going to get to our seders this year with the youngins, right? And their crazy ideas about, about the world these days. So there's always been a generation gap, right? But what is the seder about? Discussing, right? Dialogue. Being together, eating a meal together. Right? It's a little taste of reconciling parents and children, perhaps, if we do it right. But I want to read a quote from the scholar Daniel Matt, who recently wrote a book about the, the ideas of Eliyahu Hanavi, Elijah the prophet, in our tradition, he, where he says where this tradition comes from. In the 11th century, he says, in the 11th century, there's an interview with him, and in the 11th century, a rabbi says, Pesach is a time of redemption, and the Messiah is the ultimate redemption, so we're leaving the door open because we hope Elijah will come. We want to make sure we go out to meet him right away. We want to be able to do it. So the tradition begins not with opening the door so Elijah could come in, it's opening the door so we could go out and greet him. Then the next stage is, okay, if he shows up, he'll come in. And if he's coming in, he's going to need a cup of wine. That's basically the origin of the tradition. But as I said, this year people are, are fretting the discussion. It may happen around the Seder, but also many people, especially in Israel, have been listening to podcasts and reading a lot of essays about this, that People still don't know how to have joy at Pesach. Purim was hard. Hanukkah was hard. October 7th was on a joyful day with joy in the, joy in the name, Simchat Torah. And so I think, you know, the Elijah ritual can be helpful because it's a little bit, even though Pesach is joyful and we sing the Psalms of Hallel, we look outside and we see that the world is not joyful. We think of regional war in the Middle East, we think of the hostages, we think of you know, how our country might be tearing itself apart. We open the door and we see the regular world is happening there and we're creating something of joy here and you mix those together. The door is that border that's open between those. But I want to leave us with a poem that I just found yesterday, just written very recently uh, by uh, an American-Israeli poet who I read a lot here, Alden Salovey, and he wrote this for the Seder this year. Elijah is with the hostages. Elijah, the prophet who will announce salvation and peace, will not visit your Pesach Seder this year. Don't fill the cup, don't waste the wine. The prophet is exhausted, pleading with the heavens for the hostages, pleading with the heavens for the displaced, the grieving, and lost. Find hope in your own hands in deeds of repairing the world in acts of loving kindness. Elijah is not coming to your Seder. The work of healing the world and bringing redemption, he has left to us. May we have a Shabbat Shalom. May you have a Chag Kasher V'Sameach. May your Pesach be filled with joy, even if it is mixed with, with sadness, even it is, if it is mixed with seeing the world as it is, but definitely have to have hope. Shabbat shalom. So let's continue with that idea of hope. Page 282, bottom of the page. Every way that you're able, please rise.
think of our loved ones whom death has recently taken from us, those who died in the season years past, those whom we have drawn into our hearts with our own. If you're here to say Kaddish, to remember a loved one, please, uh, if you're able, if you're comfortable, please rise when I say their name so that we as a community can comfort you. <coughs> this Shabbat, or this week, marks the yard site of Saul Argush, Sadie Brower, Linda Blatt, Albert Bowman, Samuel Glickman, May Gross, Steve Califer, Stephen Kenner, Renee Landau, Liddy Levy, Milton Litwin, Lee Mock, Frank Paul, Rose Pearl, Jack Rosenthal, Lorraine Sedler, Bernard Small, Barbara Trishak, Alan Tamarkin, Sam Ungelader, Justin Wayne, Frida Weiss, Henrietta Wilansky, Edith Wilchfort, Joan Williams, Finney Ziegler, and Esker, Esker Zilberberg. Of course, we remember Edward Weiss, Eric Blyer, we're remembering. If there are other names we'd like to add, if you're online, you can put them in the chat. If you'd like to say their name, please do so as I go around. Zichonam Libracha, may their memories be for blessing. The Mourner's Kaddish is on page 294. Please rise. Yitkadal v'yitkadash me raba v'yamad divrach yute v'yamlich malchute v'chayochon v'yomechon v'chaye d'chobet Yisrael b'agala v'izman kariv v'imru amen yehe shme raba mevarach ve'olam o'ame amaya yitbarach yishtabach yitpaar v'yitromam v'yitnase. Vit Hadar, Vit Ale, Vit Halal, Shemei de Kudisha, Rehu, Le Ela, Minko Berhata, Vishirata, Tush Berhata, Venechemata, Dami Ran, Bi Alma, Bi Imru, Amen. Yehe, Shlama, Raba, Min Shemaya, Vahayim, Alenu, Bi Alko Israel, Bi Imru, Amen. O Se Shalom, Bi Mramab, Uya Se Shalom, Alenu, Bi Alko Israel. Bimru. Amen. Amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us and to all of Israel, to all of the world, to which we say, Amen. Amen. I also 
want to say that uh, we have uh, these core services on, pay on, on Monday at 10. The 29th, on the seventh day of Pesach, we're going to have youth core here. If you want to remember anybody in a more uh, deep way, uh, non-mourners are welcome too. Uh, and I also want to urge you and encourage you to uh, join us for Yom HaShoah, Yom HaZikaron, and Yom HaAtzma'ut events. Yom HaShoah is going to be commemorated the eve of May 5th and on May 6th. Our ceremony here will be May 6th, Monday in the afternoon. The following week, there's going to be Yom HaZikaron ceremonies at Federation, which is going to be a larger community event. Please join us. It's, there's going to be moments of October 7th, uh, but, you know, all the wars of Israel. And then following that uh, day is going to be Yom HaTzma'ut, which we always go from darkness to light. It's going to be especially a hard pull this year, and we are going to have a Cantor's concert here, unprecedented, on May 14th, Tuesday night, the exit of Yom HaAtzma'ut, and that's going to be a beautiful, meaningful um, marking of the day, and being together in solidarity and unity, and thinking about uh, Israel together with beautiful music. So now, without further ado, we are going to listen I want to do a sound check because I want to hear this one really well. Hot Stein. Okay, see? Okay, it's pretty uh, good. Does that work? Okay. It's work. Can you hear him? Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. Okay. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Peri HaGaben Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kiddushanu Bemitzvotav Beratzavanu Veshabbat Kodesho Beahava Uvratzon Inhilanu Zikaron Lemaase Vereshi Yom Tefila Lemitzvay Kodesh Zecher Mitzian Mitzrayim Kiva. Shabbat Shalom. Please join us in the Oreskes Social Hall for, for schmoozing, for noshing, and meeting new people, asking more questions. Have a Shabbat Shalom. Have a, a Zisten Pesach, a, a good Pesach.